What is up YouTube and welcome to this The Stand video. Yes, a cheery video to bring you in a pandemic on Christmas Eve from tier 4 lockdown in the UK. This was another superb episode after last week's debut from the pandemic apocalypse drama miniseries based on the Stephen King book of the same name. Now we're back with more non-linear storytelling full of flashbacks, which a lot of you in the comments who had read the book were really not a fan of. However, I feel that it allows the show to be very inventive with its flashbacks and allowing us more time to focus on one or two characters an episode to get to know them in depth. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please do drop a like down below and subscribe with notifications on to never miss a video. Now we open with Larry Underwood, who we would learn is a popular musician and part of a band named Pocket Savior, as we see him in a supermarket with Nadine, played by the ever controversial Amber Heard. In the book, she is a virgin in her 30s, and her and Larry seem to have a bit of friction with them as they seem to be on their way to Boulder. But I will talk about that a bit more later in the video. Now, in the book, there were a few groups heading to Boulder based on Abigail's psychic projections and following Harold's writings, with Stu being the leader of one group, having traveled with Harold and Franny, and Larry leading Nadine and others. Now, another party led by Nick, a deaf mute, is actually in this episode as well, and he was one of the people who shows Larry to Abigail, and it seems like each episode we're focusing on maybe two or three different people, and I like that personally, as it does seem to allow us to get to know them a bit more. We flash back to Larry's time at being a musician in New York, and he's clearly living the rock and roll excess lifestyle, and it's during the height of the pandemic, as his band are sick with this new flu, and his mother is also coming down with the bug, as the crowd are threadbare. Yes, very much like it happened in real life with coronavirus, people just don't seem to be taking it seriously and are at a concert there. He mentions how his band got a big break from being featured in a cologne advert, and as he does that at the album launch, an ex-roommate comes in to confront him and accuses him of stealing his music to become famous and then subsequently they're moving out. We then cut to a prisoner who is an accused cop killer named Lloyd, but he says he was framed as we actually see what happened at the events leading up to him being put in prison, as his partner in crime actually sneezed and shot a woman as a shootout occurs at a holdup that goes completely wrong. He clearly didn't want to kill this woman or anyone else, and he did seem repulsed by the deaths as a shootout occurs and he surrenders. Yes, he's innocent of killing the cop, at least. Now, the actor I thought was really great here, and I can't wait to see more of him in the show, as he had a charismatic menace about him, and I do think it fits the world and the law of him being a sort of David Koresh kind of figure there, but he will move on to be Flag's right-hand man. There is a lot of jumping across time here, as we cut to see Stu and Larry, and Larry says how he can't wait to meet Harold, while he hasn't met Harold, Larry has been following Harold's signs across the country, leading survivors over to the boulder for his own. Stu seems to be taken aback a bit, and I hope we do learn more of how Harold was on the journey and how Stu came to kind of be with Franny, as we know that Harold is incredibly bitter about the unrequited love and despises both of those people. He wants to kill them, which will be a major plot point in a few episodes time and it does start to involve Nadine there. He goes to see Abigail and has visions of Flag's Vegas, however Abigail manages to shoo Flag away. Now these are two mystical beings fighting for the souls of the survivors and it's clear Larry is a perfect recruit for Flag, but he's on a list of Abigail who has four people she wants to lead the Boulder Free Zone. Now, the importance of Abigail's dreams, or at least her projections, are pressed when Nadine is speaking with Fran about the dreams, and it seems to me that you have to have had the dreams for Abigail to be in the Boulder Free Zone. However, Nadine is curious as she's having dreams but doesn't exactly say what. Now, book readers will know what I mean, but her virginity is key 
to a plot with her and Randall Flagg coming up. I will try not to spoil too much of the plot points upcoming, and I will try to stick as much as I can to just the differences between the books. Now, one major clue as just to where Nadine is actually going next is that when you see her in the supermarket, she actually has a pebble around her neck. And this is the same pebble that has been given to people by Randall Flagg. Now, this does indicate that her dreams aren't Abigail's, but they are of himself, mysterious Randall Flagg. And it does hint that she will turn on everyone, or at least may turn on everyone, similar to the books. Before meeting Abigail, Larry wakes up in a flashback as he wakes up with the waitress from the album launch and he sees her with a snotty nose and he just absolutely dips. It's clear everyone is succumbing to this and he gets a call from the hospital saying that his mother is there. But later on, his roommate does confront him in this flashback as the roommate slowly dies. But Larry's only concern is not his ex-mate's life, but the drug stash he so obviously has. But after meeting Abigail, we see him on a bench and the world has collapsed. He meets a man who wants to turn the Yankee Stadium into the Wanky Stadium and then comes across a character called Rita Blackmore, played by Felicity Shagwell. Sorry, I mean Heather Graham, as they head back to her apartment for steak and a side of sex. Yeah, Larry is he's really getting some booty, which is probably why there's some friction between him and Nadine there. The world is done as survivors try to buy her off Larry for a million dollars. Money doesn't mean anything. Really, money is just paper. Eventually, they get to a bridge as they escape through the sewers and their tunnels. And, well, she actually later ends her life as she did not want to live in a world where she lives and others are dead. In the book, this does really break Larry, but at some point later, Larry would meet Nadine, and this flashback was interesting, and while the earlier miniseries did actually skip this character, I did like how it showed the nihilistic world at this point during the pandemic. Lloyd is still in jail during the pandemic, and treated very badly by the prison officers there as his cellmate is sick and dies and he's stuck in the cell they won't let him out he's really hungry and resorts to eating rats and his uh, dead cellmate but flag did come and save him and gives him a key to get out of jail but torturing him with a quite frankly a delicious description of flag's lunch lloyd accepts being a loyal enforcer so flag will let him out now, Lloyd will join Flag in Las Vegas, his base of operations, and this is actually the counterpart to the Twee Boulder Free Zone. Now, the friction between Nadine and Larry is, like I said, heavy throughout the episode, and she seems a bit annoyed at how he is chosen to be a sort of leader, and she asks what Abigail told him, but he can't say. They don't even have the same home there as he awkwardly says goodbye. And she seems burdened by Joe, the non-verbal child she picked up on the way to Boulder. Her life pre-pandemic was not that good family-wise, and her later story does get very, very dark, but I won't reveal that as it's integral to the story later on. She asks Larry to take Joe when he says he's going to find Harold, which he does. However, Joe seems to be scared of Harold, and as we know, he's going to go crazy. Well, it does make sense that Joe is scared of him. Now, overall, this was a superb episode, and the actor who played Larry really brought the character to life. Seeing two different versions of these characters in different times must be tough, and I'd be interested to hear what you think. My only issue is that they have the same problem his Dark Materials had, where they get a big name only for them to be barely used in the show just like Whoopi Goldberg here. But that's it for this video. I hope you have a great Christmas. Do stay safe. I've got a pre-recorded Star Wars video for you tomorrow. So please do drop a like. Please do subscribe. And I'll see you soon. And goodbye.